off-camera flash with a control signal today in the studio. Hello everyone, my name is Alex Silva and you're watching Alex Silva Photography. Today, let's continue with this series of videos about flash. Today we're talking about off-camera flash, just like in the previous video. However, this time around, we're going to send a control signal to the flash so that we can control its power settings and uh, probably other things, its mode. Let's say if we want to choose between using manual mode and or TTL mode, we can also do that. Let's get started. As I mentioned in a couple of videos before, uh, there are three ways in order for you to um, shoot or trigger a flash remotely or an off-camera flash using either cables, optical signals, or a radio or a radio trigger. We're going to cover all these today. So the first one is using a cable. But this particular cable is special. It is called a TTL cable. You can see that it's different from the ones we saw before because you can see many electrical pins on, on its base that connect to the many electrical pins on the camera hot shoe. These are specific to a brand. This is actually a, a Canon cable and you can place it on top of the camera as if it was a flash. And then the other end has the receiving pins for a flash. This flash is compatible with Canon. That's why it can communicate and then whenever we want to shoot, let's say in program mode, and we want to change the settings, we can go to the menu, go to flash control, go to the external flash function settings, and change, let's say, to TTL mode. So the flash will, between the camera and the flash, will determine the flash power. But we can also change to manual mode, then change the flash zoom to let's say 105 millimeters, or probably change it to 24, and then change the power from full power to minimum power, which is 164th. Power. It is just as if the flash were in on top of the camera. However, it is outside of it, so we can create shadows and everything. So these cables are very reliable. They pretty much won't fail, but you are restricted to its length. This is pretty short, but there are other longer cables. But you need to make sure that if you want to buy one of these cables, um, you go for the brand specific to the camera and you make sure that the flash is compatible with your camera. Otherwise, it will only work in manual mode or may not work at all. You can also use an optical signal just like we did with simple triggers. In this case, this is a solution particular to Canon. And I remember Fujifilm has a similar solution, sending optical signals to their flashes, um, but they are not compatible. What I'm putting here is a small flash. Uh, it's not super powerful. It's more powerful than the uh, built-in flash, but it's not super powerful in general terms. It doesn't swivel. It doesn't have a lot of features. However, it has the circuitry needed in order for this to be a controller, a flash controller. So um, when I turn the camera on and I get to the external flash functions, I can see an option called wireless. You can see that I can select a channel 
the groups that I'm going to control, if I'm going to shoot in manual or TTL, and I'm going to shoot on channel 3, and I'm aiming to control all flashes that are compatible with Canon and that are in receiving mode or slave mode. Now, this is not a Canon flash, but it's Canon compatible. So I can change its mode to slave. Slave mode, it is in group A and in channel three. It is the same channel that my camera is or that my trigger is. So whenever I shoot, it fires. And from here, just like I did with the cable, I can change the power settings from full power that I just used to 128. In general terms, this is very good. It's not super expensive, um, but it's the, the version that I'm showing you right now. It's, it works only for Canon and Fujifilm has something similar, but they are not compatible. They are both use uh, optical signals that send control orders. Last but not least, I'm going to show you radio triggers. For this, I'm going to change the flash. You saw me unboxing this. This is actually a Godox TT685, but rebranded for Adorama as a Flashpoint Zoom TTL. But this is in essence the same as the Godox. And this is the Godox X1T transmitter, rebranded for Adorama as the Flashpoint R2 transmitter. They, these are actually compatible with Fujifilm, however, you can fire them uh, in manual mode with other cameras, especially with Canon. In general terms, what I'm going to do is that using this, um, sorry, let me start from the beginning. The flash needs to be in slave mode. Right now it's in manual mode, so we're going to cycle this button until we see until the screen, the light from the screen turns red or orange, and we can see that it's in manual mode, and it tells you it's a slave, group A and channel nine. On the controller or transmitter, we're going to use channel nine, and we're go only going to trigger group A, right now at 128 power. If we place the trigger or the transmitter on top of the camera, the camera should be in manual mode and then we just fire. Let's change the settings, the, the power settings here on the controller, on the transmitter to full power. And no matter where this is, as long as it is within the radio range, it will fire. And here we can change the mode. We're now shooting with manual mode, but we can switch it to, let's say, TTL mode and it will work. In this particular case, it won't because this transmitter uh, only works with Fujifilm cameras and I'm using it to film it right now, to film this, and it won't work. It only works with in manual mode with other brands. So this is how you trigger a remote flash, sending a control signal using cables, opticals, and radios. I really hope you liked this video. I hope you found it informative and entertaining. And if that is the case, please press the like button. If you'd like to keep up to date with this channel, you can subscribe to it. Make sure you press the bell notification icon. And most importantly, please remember to keep learning and keep shooting. See you next week.